G'day, Mike from Australian Mountain Bike Magazine here. Back in July, Norco released 10 brand new e-mountain bikes to the market. Uh, we've got two of them here on review, the Sight VLT C2 and also the Fluid FS VLT A1. So we'll jump into all the details. All 10 of the Norco VLT bikes that have just been released share a lot of common products. One of the main ones is the Shimano EP8 motor, um, but they also share battery compatibility. Norco have done something a little bit different to other brands in the market by selling the bikes without a battery, and you just choose the size that you want when you, when you walk out of the bike shop. So that might be the 540 watt hour battery, 720 watt hour battery, or the ones that we've got on our test bikes, which is a whopping 900 watt hours. That's the biggest currently available on the market, but it does come with a penalty. The 900 watt hour batteries are over 4.5 kilos, so it does add more weight to the bike. It's a $200 cost increase from the 720 watt hour batteries, which is again, $200 more than the 500 watt hour batteries. So it's really up to you to choose how you're gonna ride your e-bike and therefore get what battery size that you need. Across the 10 bikes in the new Norco VLT lineup, there's three distinct ranges. The longest travel, biggest, burliest bike is the Norco Range VLT. So just like the Range uh, without an engine, it's got 180 mils of travel up front and 170 mils in the back. Both wheels are 29 inch and it's long, it's slack and it's big. There are two carbon models and two alloy models. Next down is the all mountain uh, sight range. So there's four models in there. There's two alloy and two carbon. Again, they share the same motor and battery options, but this time you've got 160 mils travel on the fork and 150 in the back. And new this uh, for this year is the Fluid FS VLT. So this is the top spec A1 here, and there's also the A2 below. So no carbon options in these ones, just two aluminium ones, and you do have a slightly more uh, basic parts spec on there. Um, but we'll go into that when we review this one as well. So the Shimano EP8 motor is at the heart of all the new Norco VLT e-bikes. And what's new with the new motor compared to the E8000 is that it's lighter, it drops a few hundred grams, it's more efficient, so you actually get longer battery life without a change in battery. Uh, and it's also got more power. So they've bumped up the torque to 85 Newton meters, uh, which makes a big difference, especially on the steeper climbs that you'll, you'll typically be taking an e-mountain bike up. Another important point is how Norco have used the Shimano EP8 motor. What they've done in the frame, so obviously the motor stays down the bottom, they've rotated it counterclockwise to increase the bottom bracket clearance. If you've ridden an e-bike much, you'll know that ground clearance is a really important issue because they are a heavier, heavier bike. Um, you do need some extra ground clearance there. So they've rotated it around, still keeps the center of gravity low, but it also means that the battery can now exit out of the bottom of the down tube. Uh, it is a whole hollow tube for the down tube, and no matter what size battery that you're running in your Norco VLT, it slides in and out quite easily. Charging is done on the bike uh, with a magnetically opening and closing uh, battery port. It's, it, it's really easy to get along with. You know if it's closed because the bike won't work if it's not. And there's even a handy tool to help take the battery in and out. Because you can take the batteries out so easily, uh, it is an option that if you e need even more range than you can get from a 900 watt hour battery, you could buy another one and pack it in uh, if you need a really big day out. One of the great things with the Shimano uh, step system with the EP8 is using the eTube app. So you've got um, easy connectivity and you can go through, check for any firmware updates, or what's really cool is being able to um, update any of the, uh, the settings that you want. So if we look at um, the assistance settings, I can decide you know, how powerful I want the eco mode to be, what the max torque is. Obviously you can't set everything up to 85. You can set your eco up to, up to its maximum there of 70. Put the assist level, the maximum torque, and also the assist start. So that's how quickly it's gonna get, get, really, um, get started for you. So what I've done here, I actually upped the assist start in the trail setting on the Sight VLT because I found even though the settings are the same as the Fluid FS, it didn't feel uh, as punchy. So I'm just trying to replicate the feel between the two. It's a really cool idea because it does mean that you can get this tuning done at home. Uh, you don't need to go into the shop to have it connected like you do for, for some other e-bike systems. So while all the bikes have 
different end uses and they're also got different price points, a lot of the design principles have stayed the same and especially in the parts spec. All bikes in the range have e-mountain bike rated forks. They have hubs which are rated for e-mountain bike use, specifically with stronger flanges for the extra load on the hubs. They have tyres with heavier duty casings to take the higher weight and higher load on the tyres. And they have four piston brakes with big rotors. Additionally, Norco use 165 millimetre cranks across the whole range uh, and they have wide range one by group sets with e-mountain bike specific saddles, uh, which are a lot more comfortable when you're climbing in the saddle a lot more. All the Norco VLT e-bikes come in four sizes uh, and on the larger two sizes in the range and the sight VLTs you can even fit two water bottles inside the main triangle but even on the smallest sizes you can fit one full-size water bottle which is great if you can run a large battery to be out there for plenty of hours on the trail you need to be able to carry enough water as well. Each bike in the Norco VLT range has also got an updated suspension layout. So they've moved to a horizontal link, which has also been designed around having pretty low anti-squat. This means that it may not climb as well as your XC bike, but to be honest, after having ridden a couple of them, they climb really well, even without running, reaching for the, uh, the lockout switch. The frame design does mean they have allowed for a lot of standover height, but with how they're running the motor, is they've really opened up that main triangle for the water bottle storage too. So it's a great design move. One of the main bikes I've been testing is the Norco Sight VLT C2. So this is the first carbon bike in the range. There's a model above it with higher spec. This bike sells for 10,599. Uh, take 200 bucks off if you want the 720 watt hour battery. Take another 200 bucks off if you want the 540 watt hour battery. The Norco Sight VLT C2 has a full carbon frame, but with an aluminum chainstay, which has also got the integrated speed sensor in it. It is designed for all mountain and trail riding. So it's got a 64 degree head angle and the seat angle is fairly steep at 77.7 .7 degrees. One feature that stays the same across the whole Norco VLT range is the chainstay length. It's a pretty rangy 462 millimeters long. Now, it's a little bit surprising because Norco have done size specific chainstays for a while. They do it with ride aligned now and previously they did it with gravity tune. The idea being that somebody on a smaller frame is gonna want a shorter rear end to make them bike more maneuverable. Somebody who's taller will probably want a longer chain stay length because it adds some stability and will help keep the, the front wheel planted on steep climbs. So it's interesting that every single uh, bike in the range from the Fluid FS up through to the range in either a small or extra large has a 462 mil chain stay. But I'll go into the benefits of that later on. Although they've got quite slack head angles, 64 degrees on the side here, all the bikes have the 44 mil offset fork too. So you get that good balance of stability, but low speed agility as well. And it does mean the bikes are riding as you'd expect for a modern mountain bike. Spec wise on the, on the VLT C2, you've got a 12 speed SRAM Eagle group set, uses the 11 to 50 uh, NX cassette while using a single click shifter as well. It's, you know, it's a mid-range SRAM group set, but it does the job. And the single click uh, shifter means you're not likely to chew through the drivetrain too quickly. Norco using the M520 Shimano four pop brakes with big 203 mil rotors. And the wheels are the E13 LG DH1 with a 32 uh, spoke count and laced to the DT Swiss 370 hybrid hubs. So the hybrid hubs have a, a wider flange for greater stiffness um, and also it's got the reinforced free hub body which is basically built for the extra load that you're going to put through on an e-bike. Tyres wise they use the um, strongest casing of, uh, available with the double down and it's an assegai on the front and a dissector on the back. Suspension wise you've got the Lyric RC on the front uh, and then out the back you've got the RockShox Super Deluxe with the Megneg uh, chamber on there. It's really cool that they've offset the shock a little bit in, in the frame. So even when you've got the lockout round, it's not sticking out as far as you want because the shock does sit to the left. So you've got good clearance on the frame, even though they've had to uh, work to get the, get the shock in there in a neat way and still have two bottles in there. So the geometry on the site does change from one size to the next, but it, it's modern trail or mountain geometry. So you find that on the large test bike that I've got here, it's got a 64 degree head angle 
a long 485 millimeter reach, which is complemented with a, a 40 millimeter stem and a steep 77.7 degree seat angle. So the idea is that it keeps you centered between the two wheels. And a part of that is the 462 millimeter chain stay. One of the big advantages of all the Norco uh, mountain bikes is their ride align system. It's two things. It's firstly, it's uh, some software online to help you with your setup, but it's also a key part of their bike design. Um, what the engineers have done is they've taken a lot of bike fit data uh, to get the geometry sorted for their bikes, also the suspension kinematics, and then done real world testing to see how people ride the bikes, where their body weight is, and that's why the bikes are actually riding so well these days. But the fit up guide, it's quite simple. You get started, select your bike model. So I'm gonna go category, E-Mountain, I need to get through to my site, C2. Chuck in your height, gotta be accurate, 178. Weight, uh, weight with clothing is 75. Gender, submit. So this starts getting the base uh, kind of set up. Rider skill setting, this is an important one. You can go all the way from beginner, which is say getting comfortable on the trail, looking for a setup to confidently build skills on, all the way through to professional. Now bear in mind that uh, Norco are based in, in BC and Canada, so if you're not riding like a Norco professional rider, I'd say dial it back. Now this part will really change the uh, suspension settings and also the tire, like tire pressure suggestions. And it's really important to get this right. So each setting will give you an idea of what that skill setting looks like. Um, intermediate, comfortable in technical terrain, dropping off most ledges on the trail, perhaps there's some stopping and looking first. Roots, rocks, steeper sections are mainstay and handled without notable trouble on frequently ridden trails. I'm somewhere around there to above, so that's kind of where I play with. Um, and you can even set your, your body position on the bike. I know just how important it is to stay, keep your weight forward, but I don't really do it enough. So I choose center rearward, and then it's got some extra guides there. And here's my setup. So it tells me my tire pressure, what I should cut my bar width to, what bar rise I should run, how many stem spaces to use and stem length. A lot of that stock anyway. Bear in mind, this software knows exactly what the parts are on the bike, so it won't tell you to make suspension adjustments that aren't possible. And here it goes through my, uh, my air pressure, how many volume spaces, rebound compression, and then the shock setup as well. This might not be exactly where you, where you end up on your bike setup, but it is a brilliant way to get started. So the big question, how does it ride? In short, it's a lot of fun. It's an e-bike with a modern motor with a Shimano EP8 system. It's got a great suspension platform and a good parts kit on it. So it's worth bearing in mind that it is a big bike. A lot of uh, e-mountain bikes now are going to a mullet or mixed wheel setup. So 29 inch front and 27 and a half in, in the rear. Norco sticking with 29 inch wheels front and back. And, and look, I get it. It's fast uh, and it's stable and it rolls over lots of stuff well. It does make the bike reasonably long but there are certain advantages to the ride aligned uh, fit guide and also how they've designed the bike that, that really work with that. Some people might see the 77.7 .7 degree seat angle and think it's wildly steep. But the benefit is, is it keeps you centered between the two, the, the two wheels. Um, so when you've got quite a slack front end and a long rear end, that means you're not having to shift forward or backwards too much to make the bike ride how you want. This does mean in tighter trails, when you're climbing up to do a descent, it can take a little bit more effort to get a bike, get the bike around the steeper switchbacks. You know, it's a long bike. It's around a, a 1300 millimeter wheelbase. So you do need to um, really look to find that arc around the outside of the, of the corner. Um, similarly, that length means that when you are going up a steep fire trail access to get to some descents, you just can't stop this bike. It just motors on and on even on some very loose fire trail climbs at well over 25%, you can sit back, use the, uh, use the travel and just keep spinning and the bike just trucks all the way up the climb. It's incredible. And it's one of the advantages of that long 462 millimeter chainstay. Chainstay length doesn't dictate whether a bike's good or bad. It does dictate what the riding characteristics might be. And that's a really handy characteristic for an e-bike. If you're looking at a long travel e-bike, chances are you want it to climb well because you're trying to get uh, assistance on the climbs to get to the descents. And this thing hauls up all the climbs. I've taken it out for a, a few hours of riding, non-stop boost, and got about 60 kilometers in and a little bit over 2000 meters of climbing. Plenty of that I shouldn't have been using boost and didn't need to, 
but I wanted to see how much battery life I could get out of the 900 watt hours. Ideally, you'd use the trail mode, which gives you the, a, an appropriate amount of assistance and you could probably get at least 30% more ride time out of the bike. While the Sight VLT C2 might feel a little bit big on coming through some climbing switchbacks, that's kind of you know, the burden that you have to bear for the performance going downhill. On middling terrain, it's still 160, 150 mil travel 29er. A lot of bike for a pretty, uh, pretty basic trail. When it starts to get steeper and faster, this bike comes alive. Now, when you're quickly changing directions at speed through, through built burns, it's super stable uh, and it's very confidence, confidence inspiring as you get faster. Um, I did notice though that the stock suspension settings that the Rider Line app gave me did feel a little bit soft. So that's something I found after initial setup is that I wanted to run a firmer suspension setting than the app gave me. That's fine, I got a, a great starting point from the app but I did want to improve it for the stability I wanted, especially when you were landing off a drop towards a corner and loading up the bike a fair bit more. The stability of the long bike is also great in the rougher terrain. It's not until you're getting repeated hits on steeper terrain that I would feel maybe I look at the range VLT. The Sight VLT is a great match to a lot of the trails that I've been riding. The length of the bike and the weight of the bike does really let it have a very confident ride at speed and on steep terrain. Uh, I found it stayed really planted on, on rougher terrain that I, than I would you know, enjoy riding on a lightweight trail bike, um, be it rocky or, or steep with lots of, lots of small drop-offs. Similarly, at high speed flow trails, it also stays really well planted and pushes through a berm and a sails off ledges uh, with ease. The downsides are the technical climbs. It's a lot of bike to get up and over ledges. The way to move around that is attack them more aggressively. When you keep this bike moving uh, and keep, keep the motor giving you some assistance, you need to find those features on the trail where you can get some assistance to get up and over features. The lower the, the, lower the speed is, the more that you need to manhandle the 25.1 kilo bike, and it's a bit of a handful. But I think where this is great is where you got either loose, crappy trails to climb up or something which has got a little bit more room and a good climbing line to, des to descend some of the gnarlier trails at full speed. My take with the Norco Sight VLT C2 and anything in the Sight range would be that it's a great trail to all mountain bike for most Australian mountain bike trails. If you have somewhere where it's non-stop steep terrain, maybe you live in Medina, then I think the range would be a good one to look at or anywhere where you have significantly longer, steeper descents you could go up uh, a bike size, as it were. As it is, the Sight VLT is a lot of fun to ride, uh, but it really comes into its own the faster you're going on steeper terrain. If you mostly have mellow, flatter trails, you might find that it's a lot of bike to keep on moving when you're getting above that 25 km an hour uh, speed limit where the assistance cuts out and you're needing to put in your own energy. It's probably a different bike to look at if that's like, what your trails look like, but as it is, this is a great you know, trail cruiser. It just loves to be railing corners. Um, the supple suspension makes off-camber off -camber corners and routes a thing of the past. There's no hesitation there. It stays planted and gives you the traction that you want. I think it's worth thinking about what battery life you need from the bike and how you're gonna be riding it and, and choosing the right battery size at point of purchase because the smaller battery will reduce the weight of the bike and that might also uh, have an impact on how you want to ride it as well. All up, I think the Norco Sight VLT C2 is a well-priced trail bike, which has got a leading uh, battery system and motor, a great spec, and there's, rooms, there's room there to make some customizations to really make the bike your own. With the length of the bike, it does mean if you're on some tighter, narrower trails, even on descents where you've got faster transitions between corners, you do need to make sure you're loading up the suspension to pop from one line to the next. It's not a problem, but if you're used to flow trails where you've got long consistent radiuses, you might find that this is a, a lot of bike to take into those tighter trails. Similarly, it's really gonna reward people who like to get everything out of their bike. The front end of the bike does have the Lyric RC. It's a great 35 mil legged platform. A lot of bikes that are coming in this kind of, this travel segment in the e-mountain bike market are coming with a RockShox Zeb or a Fox 38. Um, I never really found that this was under forked. If you think that you do want more fork, 
I'd probably start looking at a range. You know, there's no real price difference. You're just getting that longer travel bike and you are getting all the motor and battery assistance in the same system. So talk to your Norco dealer about what might suit you and you're riding the best, but the options there if you want you know, a burlier suspension package.